Hi, this is Nahid. This video is a short overview of one of our most important tools called Your Year in Review. We're going to go over all the questions in this assessment and I'm going to tell you what they mean and why we do it. So first, why do we do the Year in Review every single year? Well, really to help you get clear on what's most important to you. Often, when we think about our goals and what we need to achieve, it comes from some to-do list and we really haven't done the work to think about if we really want to have these goals. So this helps you get clear on what's most important to you, which makes your coaching work much more effective. It also helps you distinguish between your goals and a theme because at Aspire, we ask you to create a theme every year and your theme is kind of like a personal growth goal. It's deeper work that you're doing on yourself that actually helps you achieve your goals. So when you do the year in review, it helps you identify what your goals are, but then also it helps you see what's underneath those goals that you could possibly use for a theme. And then, of course, for those of you who are doing this every single year, it helps you see your progress year over year, which is really important because personal growth work is subtle work. Once you've done it, you habituate to how you are, and you don't really notice often how much you've changed. So this helps you see how much you've changed year over year. So let's go over the questions one by one, and I'll tell you what they mean. So the first question just has you list accomplishments that you're proud of over the past 12 months. And the reason we do this is because your accomplishments point to your strengths. So this reinforces for you what your natural strengths are. And it also helps you acknowledge things that you have achieved over the past year that you might have just forgotten. A lot of us tend to disregard some of our achievements, especially for high achievers. Once it's done, it's done, right? We have maybe a moment of, yay, I did it, and then we're on. But um, this helps you acknowledge what you've done, which is really good because sometimes when you're feeling down, it helps to remind yourself of all the great things you've accomplished. But then we get into something a little bit more deep, which is what did you learn? So a lot of times we don't think about what we learned. This question requires you to think and reflect. And the lessons that you've learned over the year actually point to your personal growth over the year. And you may have taken this personal growth work for granted. So this helps bring it to the surface and helps you reflect on, wow, how have I grown? How have I changed? What have I learned? Then we start asking you even more in more detail, how have you changed? These are very important questions because understanding how you've changed helps you cement your personal growth. This question forces you to notice what's different and acknowledge yourself for the positive, but it also helps you see if life situations have come into your life. For example, let's say something that you never could have expected at the beginning of last year came up in your family, and it ends up throwing everybody for a loop, and you have to work through something now that you didn't expect, and it takes you several months to work through it, then this year may not end up being everything you expected. And when you actually write this down, you go, oh, okay, now I understand how my life changed and maybe the goals that I set at the beginning of the year became less relevant because of these changes. And so that just helps you get good perspective. How have you changed over the year and, and as a result of those changes, what new possibilities exist for you? This is really important because it not only continues to force you to reflect on your personal growth, but it also helps you see how your personal growth work has opened new opportunities for a better life. So a lot of times we habituate to our personal growth. So we work something out, things that we used to react to, we don't react to anymore. We have a calmer life, but we don't think much more beyond that, we think oh, okay, that's good, I'm happy now, but then we get used to the happiness, and now we think about the next level of happiness we want to achieve, and we don't really realize what we're doing. So what this does is help you realize, especially if you've worked really hard on personal growth, and maybe you haven't seen some of those external things happen just yet, it really helps you see how much value you're really getting out of your personal growth work. Now we ask you about your happiest moments over the past 12 months, and this is really important too because your happiest moments tend to correlate with your highest values. The moments where you were the happiest tend to be where you spend your most time and most of your time and your money on, the things that make you happy. And 
the other thing that's kind of probably weird to say, but we only remember part of our life. And what we remember from our life tends to have a lot to do with our happiness. So when you consciously remember the happiest moments of a given year, and you do something, even writing in this year in review, you write about them, you'll have a better likelihood of remembering these events. So now what you're doing is consciously making yourself a happier person by remembering the things that made you most happy and having those things be a portion of your life that you remember. We also ask you, what are your regrets? Is there anything you would have done differently if you had the chance and how? Now, there's a completely different reason for this question. If you look at your regrets, it actually helps you recognize what you may not be taking responsibility for in your life. And it shows any ongoing negative patterns that you might not have noticed. And this may give you something to look at in terms of what you want to set as a theme or you want to work on for personal growth moving forward. Now we ask you a really deep question. What if it all had to stop now? If you had nine months to live and nine million dollars, what would you do? And this is a question you just have to roll with. But it forces you to come to terms with your mortality. And help and that focus often helps bring to the forefront the most important things you want to do in life. If you don't have that much time and you couldn't do very many things in life, what are the few things that you would want to do? What would be the few things that you would want to have your life be about? And then we ask this follow-up question, no matter what goals you set for this next year and what you achieve, how you know you're living each day of, of your life with purpose. Well, number seven sort of gets you to something that may be what you feel is your deepest purpose. Number eight helps you take that and integrate it into kind of the practical daily things that you do every day. Is there a way I can integrate these things that are really deeply important to me into my daily activities? So this is really important because it creates meaning in your life, which makes you happier. Okay. So then we say, if you had unlimited resources and support to make anything happen, both professionally and in your personal life, what would things look like 12 months from today? So what this does is kind of take the fog of what next year is going to look like and remove it and help you create a vision for that. And once you have a personal vision, then it makes it easier for you to set some goals. So then we ask you to come up with a couple of professional goals. And you don't have to have professional and personal goals, but we ask both because most people have things they want to achieve both in their professional life and in their personal life. So we have you take think of two things that are exciting and challenging, um, but also feel pretty possible. And these give you a sense for maybe what goals you want to set. They don't set in stone what goals you're going to set, but they just give you an idea of what goals you might want to set for next year. Then we ask you the key question, which is really most important here, how will you have to change the way you work to give yourself the best possible chance of success? So this is what gets underneath the goal. So you may have a goal to be a great leader, but when we ask you how do you have to change the way you work to be seen as a great leader, now you're stepping into, well, how do I have to change as a person? And that leads to a personal growth goal, which then you can integrate into your theme. So this helps you get focused on what matters for your personal growth. Your theme is going to come from where you want to grow personally. And if you pick a good theme, then working on that theme all year is going to make your goals much easier to achieve. Okay, then we do the same thing on a personal note. So list up one big personal change you might want to make this year. And again, you want to try to find a balance between something that feels a little challenging, but also a little possible and exciting. So it should be in reach. And then this is something that you might actually choose as a personal goal. But then we hit you with the same follow-up question. How will you have to change in order to give yourself the best possible chance of success? And this moves your attention to what's really important, 
how you will want to grow personally in order to achieve the personal goal that matters to you. Here is where you'll find another good idea for your theme. So once you have some ideas for goals and some ideas that you can integrate into your theme, then we sit back and ask you to think about your support system. So assuming you'll have the best possible support system, what do you need in order to be successful? And if you can answer this question well, then it helps you see what kind of a support system you'll need, and it gives you an idea of how you want to use the Aspire program and coaching to move forward. There's so many things available to you in this Aspire coaching program, and if you know how you want to use the program to help you succeed, then you will probably utilize the program more than if you aren't quite sure and you're just sort of receiving the different things that we have available to you in a more ambivalent and random fashion. So this helps you get very conscious and proactive about how you want to use the coaching to move you forward. And then we tend to assume that you're kind of exhausted after answering all those questions. But there's always one thing at the bottom. You've completed the questions. If you have any energy left, this is the place to brain dump any additional thoughts, feelings, or open questions about last year, this year, or what came up for you. Now, I would give you space to brain dump because it may be possible that after answering all these questions, you have tons of energy and you have all these ideas running through your head. And you want to get these ideas written down before you forget them. So this is a good place to do it. This part, this last question is pretty optional. But if you have anything running through your head, you want to get it written down, and your year in review document is the best place to put it. So I think that's the end. Yep, I didn't put anything else there, so let's go back to our live screen. But that's the year in review. The year in review is one exercise that will probably take you some time, but we always give it to you at the end of the year because most people have some time during the holidays, even if it's you know a couple days before New Year's Eve where they um, really want to think about maybe New Year's resolutions, or maybe you just have some quiet time over the holidays to do some personal reflection. This is a great exercise to do. Have fun with it, and of course, I always read your year in reviews, and I always love to hear about them when we talk in January.